the ADA of certain. Praying and soliciting and everything. I'll salute. Okay. And then I guess, do we have any choice? I don't see a minister here. Do you? No, I need to find where it is. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. I'd like to call to order the October 21st meeting of our Board of City Commissioners. Uh, call a roll, please. Stevens? Here. A.G.? Here. Herod? Here. Maynard? Here. Hall? Here. Winteringer? Here. Smith? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. <clears throat> if you're able, please stand and join me in the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Position, attention, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to say welcome to each and every one of you. And uh, it's nice to see you here, to show that you have interest in our city. Item number one on our agenda is consider approval of the agenda. So moved. Commissioner Harris moves. Have second. A second by Commissioner Winteringer. Call the roll, please. Harris. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Ag. Aye. Maynard. Aye. Hall. Aye. Motion carries. Item number two: consider approval of the consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Hall. I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Agee. Call the roll, please. Hall. Aye. Agee. Aye. Herod. Aye. Maynard. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Motion carries. Item number three, Commissioner's comments. <clears throat> Maybe if we could, I just want to ask a question or, and possibly maybe get the city manager to clarify some stuff. Apparently there's some rumors going around that the city of Shawnee is going to get the old naval airfield building as well as the pure pillars from OBU and that there is some talk about demolishing it. And I think maybe we just need some quick clarification early in the meeting, if you don't mind. So that's fine now. Uh, commissioners. I uh, just actually received today a request from OBU to the city to accept those two buildings. Are your commissioners familiar with those two? Um, across at the corner of Franklin and Airport Drive, uh, our lift station is right there on the corner. We just, we just redid that one. And just to the east of there is an old building that was a residence like they all were years ago oh, okay. back when it was the naval base. And there's a, an old brick building that's probably circa 1930-ish, and OBU would like for the city to accept that. Also, if you drive down Franklin Street, right at where the entrance to the old naval base used to be, there are two pillars that are there that identified the entrance back when it was a functioning naval base. That was prior to when uh, Airport Road was actually uh, constructed and built in that way. In that oh, it, the guard station used to be a barbershop, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't know what you're <clears throat> Both of those uh, came in to me today at about 5.30, 6 o'clock when uh, Randy Smith brought those to me. Uh, any acceptance of real estate or gift like that has to be approved by the city commissioners. So there's been no discussion about demolition or removal or removal or replacement or anything to date. We didn't have anything official, so there really wasn't much to talk about. Now that we have something that's official, uh, we'll discuss it internally and rec make a recommendation to the city commission on what we should do next. And that even demolition, if we were to accept it, if we were to determine that it should be demolished or the rocks used elsewhere, that would come before the commission for yes. a vote? Yes. Perfect. We don't own the property. If we were going to maintain that structure for some reason, there would have to be some sort of arrangement between OBU and the city. None of that's been discussed about or worked out. So 
at this point it's just a request for the city to accept the property the commission hasn't acted on that so there's was, we're having to is that what they're using now for maintenance it's just just south of their maintenance facility property yes sir it's in the same parking lot there as our lift station they're talking about the land and the building, right? No, well, I think land it's just the building. I'd have to look at just the request. Just the building? Commissioner, I, I really am not sure. Oh, I, okay. I got it at 5 o'clock today, and I really didn't even read it. I knew there was some discussion about it, and he brought it to me. I need to look at it a little okay. closer. Okay. Well, I think the land's on the original airport property. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just the building. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Any other comments? I just, uh, on our meeting last week on the Guy's report is, is, uh, is the staff working with the chamber or what's the kind of, what are we, where are we going with that or whatever? I tried to call late last week to talk to Kinley and she was out of the office. Uh, I'll try to touch base with her again. Um, you know, our consultant's recommendation was that we uh, go ahead and move toward the 501c6 designation and, and uh, move that function of, of the, the, the hotel motel tax out of the chamber. Now you'll remember back in August of last year, the City Commission actually has already created that 50C6, 501. 501C6, and, and, and had three directors that were a part of it. I was one of those, Commissioner Smith was one of those, and Chairman uh, Rocky Barrett was one of those. Mm -hmm. But Chairman Barrett refused to, to serve on that committee, so the two remaining individuals on it are, are Steve and myself. I think more importantly that we need to talk about is, you know, have some discussions, have a public meeting or some sort of discussion about it. We need to decide if that's what commissioners still want to continue to do. And if so, how do we transition from where we are now to where we want to be? And not a whole lot of discussion has happened yet, Commissioner, but we plan to have those soon. Well, it, when I was at the meeting, I suggest that we need to move forward. I don't want this to kind of hang around and then nothing happens. So whoever balls, whoever's caught the ball then, well, we need to make sure it starts bouncing somewhere. I don't think we need to delay it, but in fairness, Kenley, uh, Kenley is, well, just, Kenley's very sick. I don't know if y'all know that and going through some difficulties right now. And we need to be patient here just for a few weeks. So okay? I don't think it's long term, but uh, we want to wish her the best, but I know she's really going through some difficult times right now and trying to do it. And uh, so maybe we'll just proceed with that, Brian, and I'm sure Nancy and the chamber, however you all come up with. Okay. We'll do. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. With your recommendation. Any other comments? Do we have any more work sessions coming up or? Any more what? Working work. sessions or? Can yeah. I get enough work? <laughs> no. Well, I thought Carrie was How'd working you know, on one. Huh? Yes, sir. It's, it, it's going to be a part of my report. Uh, we're going to do the tail end of our retreat on the 14th of November. Okay. We'll get more information out the commissioners. <coughs> Any other comments? The 14th of November, I think, is when they're having that, um, what is it called for women? Yeah. Women in Chamber. Chamber. Yeah. Oh, distinction. Is that the ladies' mm -hmm. distinction yeah. chamber? I don't know what the date on that though is. It's, it's the Thursday, and I think it is the 14th. Yeah, it's on the 14th. Well, that'd be difficult for Phyllis. And what is the date? Be there. It may be the 12th. Excuse me. I think it's, it's Tuesday the 12th. <coughs> it's the, 12th. Okay. the expo is not going to be available. So you just it's Tuesday the 12th in the evening okay. is when we were planning the schedule. Okay. Yes. Well, Tuesday's difficult, right? For you. Did you? She checked the schedule with you. Yes, yeah, she. Yes, yeah, she called. Everybody. Okay. Everybody was confirmed except except Commissioner Stevens. Okay. At this point. Okay. Yeah, it's at six thirty. If I remember. Okay. Yes. That's great. Okay. Right. Yes. Other comments. <clears throat> okay. If not, any more comments? We'll move to citizens' participation. Let me outline the rules of citizens participating. Uh, three minutes is maximum. So get your. Uh, comments ready and have them in order uh, so that you can uh, uh, share your thoughts with us. So uh, who would like to come forward? And, and remember to state your name into the microphone so our TV audience and uh, the people here can hear. My name is Jim Sims, address 2014 North Minnesota Circle in Shawnee. No, go ahead and just talk right in that mic. 
Okay, now, we have ordinances and everything, speed limits and all that. What's good for one is good for everybody, right? It says 35 miles an hour, everybody has to obey that. Sure. If it says you don't pee on the sidewalk, nobody pees on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. Now. Why don't you just hand it to the, the city manager there, what you want? So if, if pedestrian and I hate that too. If a pedestrian is held accountable for obstruction obstructing traffic, okay, talk to that good. microphone real good for me, okay. okay, so we can hear you. If a pedestrian is held accountable, which should be for obstructing traffic, that's wrong. That applies to everybody for obstructing traffic, doesn't it? Take a look at your picture. That is obstructing pedestrian traffic. Now, okay. I wonder who in the world did that. On the sides of those barrels, it says, City of Shawnee Traffic Control. Now, if we're going to enforce it on one, we're going to enforce it on everybody. That's not the first time a long MacArthur has been blocked off there. I've got pictures four times the last 18 months. Nobody cares. Call about it, nobody returned the call, did they, John? Nobody cares about it. You better not block an automobile, but we'll block all the sidewalks we want to. If you want me out, in, out of the street, oh, keep the sidewalks blocked. Okay. Out here, you need cups in your... Uh, okay. We appreciate your comments. Thank well, you. I'm tired. You're not here for me anymore. You want fighting? Uh, Did you get a picture of this, Brian? Did you see it? Uh, I'll let you keep it. Yeah, y'all need to. We've got she one got one here, here but y'all need to probably react to that. Yeah, you mine. Want to, oh, you, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't need it. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other citizens' comments? Please come forward. Yes, sir. Who's this guy? Uh, my name is Jim Kinnaman, and uh, on the earlier comments about the ordinance building and OBU, I'd like for the commission to uh, take into consideration that the uh, uh, Historical Society and the citizens of Shawnee have been trying for 20 years to acquire that building, and we was given that building once, and they yanked it away. Who's they yanked it away? OBU. Oh, okay. When they when they changed presidents, huh. it, it changed. But we we have plans. And Lanier McDonald has spent 20 years compiling history of the naval air station that was here in Shawnee, and her her desire is to make a uh, memorial over there out of that building, out of private funds. We're going to restore that building. So if you would, when you discuss it, please consider that. Thank you very much for those comments. Very good to know. Very good to know. Other citizens' comments? We welcome these comments. Sometimes we don't know what's going <laughs> on in some things, so you please feel free, okay? Okay. Then we will move on to item number five. City Manager's presentation of Employee of the Month to Don Morgan. <clears throat> Is this the lady that gets only 40 calls a, a night, a week? Got like a 2,800 calls last week. Hold on. Commissioners, I have not met Dawn yet. She works as a dispatcher in the police department. And she's got something she'd like for me to say on her behalf. Dawn has proven to be a very dependable and team oriented member of the communications family. She goes out of her way to make everyone in the dispatch, the public, and other agencies feel welcome and comfortable. She has willingly taken on task given and maintains a professional attitude at all times. Her continuing kindness to others and work ethic have greatly influenced others in the department and they are grateful to have her. A couple of interesting things about her. She has been married for 24 years, has five children, two biological and three adopted. She moved to Shawnee from Colorado Springs in July of 2010. She has worked for the city of Shawnee for 10 months as a dispatcher and says she loves her job and genuinely enjoys coming to work every day. 
The next part is a real significant accomplishment. She is a cancer survivor diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, November 31st, 2011, and has been in remission since April of 2012. Congratulations. Dawn enjoys reading and going on motorcycle rides with her family. She loves to bake and decorate cakes and enjoys refinishing furniture. Dawn, thank you very much for your service to the citizens. This is the best part. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. You know, uh, I, I do need to make a comment about the working in dispatch. I logged a number of calls. The uh, police chief uh, sends out that number, and I'm astounded at the number of calls that they deal with down there. And uh, I think just recently it was over 2,000 calls in one week that was processed through that department down there. And I, I personally have never had to call 911, but I think it's for emergency. But these people are real diplomats. They have people calling them wanting to know where the locate a water meter or it's unbelievable some of the questions that they get and they're really wonderful people to do that and uh, I commend them and, and everyone in that department that is a tough job and y'all do a wonderful job down there and it's congratulations on being employee of the month thank you <clears throat> item number six discussion <clears throat> Discussion, consideration, and possible action on an ordinance repealing and amending Chapter 15, Article 4, the Code of Ordinances of the City of Shawnee regarding smoking in public places. Mr. Bryce, would you like to say something on this, sir? Or Amy? Uh, okay. <laughs> Good evening. Um, my name is Amy Dunn, and I represent the Communities of Excellence, which has been working with Certified Healthy Oklahoma across the state. Um, I've been traveling to numerous communities and presenting the opportunity for communities to become certified under the Healthy Community Initiative. Um, this started uh, a number of years ago, and since then, Shawnee was certified the last two years. Um, we're looking to seek certification again this year. However, the criteria has changed, and so with you know growth and, and things like that, the criteria seems to get better and better each year. Um, currently, we are looking at an ordinance that would, this basically is what we call the baseline, and we need to expand the current language in our existing smoking in public places ordinance. Um, in February of 2012, the governor uh, had an executive order that asked for all state-owned and operated properties, including their parks and recreational areas, to become tobacco-free indoor and out. What this particular ordinance that we're proposing at the local municipality level is basically the same thing. Our current language that we have in our existing ordinance for the city of Shawnee, it deals with smoking indoors. It does allow a 25 feet perimeter around the operated properties of the city um, to be within that smoke free zone. We're asking that this ordinance language be expanded to be tobacco free indoors and out, including our parks and recreational areas that we operate. Um, this particular ordinance is what we call the baseline for becoming a certified healthy community. Um, in Shawnee now, uh, Oklahoma Baptist University, St. Gregory's University, uh, Gordon Cooper Technology, and all of Shawnee Public Schools, as well as some of our uh, manufacturing facilities are tobacco-free properties. So this particular ordinance that you're looking at is just an extension of what's already going on around us. Um, many communities that I've already been working with have passed this, and it seems to be that a movement um, for Shawnee to do so also. Um, if we pass this, then that sets us up for what we call the excellence criteria. In the past, under our certification, we've received grant funds from the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust um, to help improve wellness initiatives, and we're looking to seek that again. If we can get certified, um, which the deadline is November 1st, then we'll know by December whether we've been certified or not. And if we are certified, then that opens us up to apply for grant funding come January 2014. What's nice about the grant funding is, in the past, um, it's been a nominal amount. Uh, I believe the city of Shawnee received $10,000, which we use to help with add two improvements to our track that we have. Um, but what's really nice is the funding has actually doubled. Um, the endowment trust chose to increase the amounts to communities. 
This money is unencumbered. We do not have to have any matching funds to go with it. The money is nice because it's kind of whatever we choose to do with it, we can, as long as it's going to promote those health and wellness initiatives that we want to improve uh, the community with. And so uh, we are looking at $110,000 if we apply at the excellence level, which under um, James and I have been looking through the criteria, and we, we see that this is the major uh, stepping stone that we need to pass tonight. If we can get past this one thing, then that sets us up. We pretty much have 90% of everything that qualifies us for excellence level. There's only just two other little things that we'll have to do. Um, but if we can't get past tonight, then we don't even need to discuss those things. So. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to entertain those. <coughs> what are the two other little things you're talking about? Um, one is a marketing and advertising ordinance for city-sponsored events, which it's my understanding the city does not sponsor events. The other one is a zoning policy um, that can be done. It deals with the storefront coverage of windows. Um, it's basically a safety issue. A number of years ago, um, marketing companies would cover windows completely to where you couldn't see inside stores. Um, you couldn't tell if the store was being held up by gunpoint. Um, also, it was a beautification issue. And so communities began to pass policies around uh, minimizing a percentage. <coughs> Basically, they say only a certain percentage of storefront windows can be covered uh, by marketing and advertising. You can't completely plaster all of the windows uh, covering them up to where people cannot see inside. That's any business in Shawna here? Yes. That would be it. It'd be a, like a zoning type thing. And most communities already have some type of zoning around that. Um, it would just be around signage. Any other questions? Okay, being no questions, then uh, any discussion among the commissioners? Okay, the chair will entertain a motion. Then. Uh, is James going to make a, was James going to, James Bryce going to make a report? Is there a staff recommendation? Uh, James, you have a staff recommendation that's been asked. Mm -hmm. uh, staff's recommendation is to uh, approve the ordinance. <coughs> have you looked over the applications themselves? Uh, I have, yes. So what other issues are involved in the application? Uh, the other issues, uh, as Amy yes. said, is something that we, we don't do now. We just need policy on, which is advertisement of alcohol or tobacco at any city-sponsored events. Uh, we don't do that now, so, I mean, it's, it's just kind of a no brain given there. <laughs> and, and the other one is the, the uh, regulation of storefront advertisement. It's the only other two things that, that we need to uh, qualify and write the application for a grant in the amount of $110,000. Talk about any storefront or a particular kind? Any storefront. Uh, any more questions of Mr. Price? Well, I just trying to see where we're going on this. It's a competitive it's a competitive grant, isn't it? No. Well no, it's 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 grant money that if we're approved, we don't have to match any funds with it. It's it's one hundred ten thousand dollars for for us to use on any healthy initiative. It's going to be a big help to the pool, and we certainly won't get it if we don't do the put the things in place to at least apply for it. Well, I'm, of course, I'm concerned about the enforcement and, and the parks and on the lake and stuff like that. I you know I just yeah uh, I mean I'm the same way. It's like. I mean, what what about the what other reason we're not going to do it? Forward. I mean, other places are doing it, and, they're, and they, there may be people that get away with breaking the rule, but that's not a reason to not implement the ordinance. And I can speak to enforcement. Um, I've been working with a number of different communities. Um, one of those things was Eufaula. Um, that was one of the things because they do have Eufaula Cove, a very large area that they actually operate and lease. Um, so that that would be affecting their particular parks and recreational area. 
um, the police chief there specifically stated, he said, we post the signs. It's considered a passive enforcement issue. There are fines of $10 to $100 if needed be, and it would be like anything else. The police would enforce it if necessary. Um, it's something that if you choose to, it's not like anything different other than your typical speeding signs or throwing trash out the window. We have laws and, we, and people choose to follow those laws or people choose not to follow those laws. And these passive enforcement issues are important to the community because they send a message of health and wellness. Okay, Linda, now you I said you a, had something. Yes, I have a handout there and then I have some comments too. Um, this ordinance that we're going to be talking about tonight is not about the pool. And it shouldn't be about the money. We don't want to have the best policy that money can buy. Uh, what we should be talking about is, is, is it a good policy for Shawnee? Is it necessary for us? Uh, are we going to solve a problem by passing this ordinance? Uh, how enforceable is it? And will it really make Shawnee a healthier city in and of itself? Because if it doesn't, if it's going to take more than just this to make Shawnee a healthier city, uh, what else are we going to be looking at? You know, why would we stop here? Well, this For is certainly a step in the right please, direction. Please let me finish. Yeah. Um, if know. we, uh, I think the number two objective on the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust is the re reduction of obesity. And uh, so are we going to come up with an ordinance that's going to ban the consumption of sodas and high fat food in public places uh, in our parks. Um, in my opinion, uh, this is not a good policy for the city of Shawnee because we're no longer talking about secondhand smoke. Uh, we're talking about what people can do to themselves. Uh, and these are people that pay taxes, and yes, they have a right to choose whether or not they use tobacco in, when they're on city property. But it's punitive to, to me, it's punitive to a select group of people. And uh, it how many other ordinances, again, you know, are we going to have to pass based on somebody else's definition of what is a healthy community? Because we don't know what they're going to come up with later that we might have to consider. And how do we want our officers spending their time? Do we want them chasing people out of parks? Do we want them going onto the lake and telling people they have to leave? And something I think that's really important is how are we going to, how are we going to enforce this at the Expo Center during the rodeo? Uh, and it's a known fact that a lot of people that frequent the rodeo, people that work at the rodeo, that they use smokeless tobacco. So now we're going to penalize <coughs> these people. And uh, I, I think it would be a deterrent to some people to, to attend that. And again, I don't think it's some place that we want our officers to be spending their time. There may be some benefit to passing this ordinance, but in my opinion, it's more burden than it would be a benefit to our community. And I can answer a lot of that for you. Um, one of the things that we look at is, um, as public health stewards, um, our job is to communicate and educate the, the detriment that something could be to a community. Um, as we know, our health rankings in the state of Oklahoma, as well as many of our communities, are very low. Um, I don't have the exact statistic for the city of Shawnee, but I don't know it's at the top of the health uh, ranking for the state. One of the things that you look at when you're to doing that, you look at what they call environmental strategies. And those are policies and ordinances that can be passed to promote public health issues. Um, this particular health issue kills about 6,000 people every single year in Oklahoma. And I kind of equate that because we don't really necessarily think of what is 6,000 people, but it's equivalent to 14 747 airplanes crashing full of Oklahoma residents. And if you were to look at that, if one 747 airplane crashed and they had citizens from the city of Shawnee in it, we would want to know why and we want to put a stop to it. And so that's why this is a public health issue that does a, a, a bring about change in a community. Um, smoking, secondhand smoke, yes, is, a, is an obvious thing that we've looked at, but also tobacco use is a, major, is a major factor. And some of those people that would be dying each year is directly from tobacco-related illness. But again, we're, we're telling people what they can do to themselves or we're going to penalize them. But it's our job as public health individuals to educate them, right. and we have seen significant reduction in the state passing these ordinances. We were at 49th in the state, um, in the nation, as far as public health, and significantly that was due to, due to tobacco use. In recent years, we have recently dro dropped in just the last two years to 42nd, and that's specifically because of our policies on tobacco use. I think that public education and encouragement are the way that we should go, and not through penalty and ordinances. 
Right. It's going to be difficult for us to enforce. Just my opinion. I understand. I think this is just looking at bringing the, the city's properties up to the same level that other communities are doing, as well as the state owned and operated properties and large campuses around the community. I, so, I agree. It's, it's a trendy thing to do right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's good for us. Okay. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other comments, Commissioners? Okay. I we'll make a motion that we approve the uh, ordinance as written. You need to read it, Marianne, or? Oh, well. If we get a second. Second. This is an ordinance repealing and amending Article 4 of Chapter 15 of the Shawnee Municipal Code, fines, smoking in public places and indoor workplaces, providing for definitions, regulating use of tobacco, providing for penalty, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for repeal, and declaring an emergency. Okay, they read the title. I'll call the roll, please. Hall? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Nay. Ag? Nay. Herod? Nay. Maynard? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, uh, we need to entertain a separate motion for an emergency. Uh, Mary Ann, is that the uh, yes, you need a separate motion for the emergency. Okay. Let's so make a motion that we make an emergency clause. Your Second. <clears throat> Call a roll, please. Smith? Aye. Paul? Aye. Stevens? Nay. <clears throat> Ag? Nay. Herod? Aye. Maynard? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Motion carries. No, it doesn't carry. Oh, I'm sorry. Do what? It takes six. It takes five for an emergency clause. Five, I mean, for the emergency clause. So it'll be 30 days. Huh? For 30, 30, days. 30 days before it goes into effect. Goes into okay, effect. number seven. <clears throat> Discussion, consideration, and possible action on an ordinance repealing and amending Chapter 12 Court of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Shawnee. Could you uh, give us a report, Mary Ann, please? If you'll recall, uh, we made a report about court operations a couple of months ago. We've now uh, finished reviewing our ordinances. Our court ordinances, I have no idea when they were last updated. It's been a, clearly a very, very long time. Been a lot of changes in state law. We have reorganized it, um, put in some provisions that uh, allow us to do the things that we talked to you about last time. Uh, one of the changes that's in there is the, the current ordinance allows for the appointment of a judge with alternates if that judge is absent. The new ordinance allows for the appointment of as many judges as the commission deems appropriate with one to be a senior presiding judge and the others to be associate judges. And that if you ever decide you want to split up dockets, if we take on more juvenile work, as Commissioner Stevens would like for us to talk about, mm -hmm. that would allow you to do that. The rest of it is mostly just bringing things into compliance. It does authorize us specifically to make use of electronic signatures, electronic records, all those things that are now authorized by law. So it's mostly housekeeping and then the things that we had earlier talked about. Questions to our city attorney? So was this, <clears throat> yeah, I have a question about this. You're wanting us to change the ordinance to allow for uh, an unknown number, up at to, least more than one. You. It'll be up to the commission whenever it decides that could be never. It could be, you know. Oh, so we're not, we're just acting on adopting just, an ordinance, not an no. immediate change right now. We're creating an option, but we're not exercising that option. So if we didn't <laughs> want to do that, we could still do That's it. right. Okay. If you don't want to do it, you don't, okay. if you don't ever need to do it. You know. Any other questions? Any further discussion among the commissioners? The chair will entertain a motion in this matter. So Second. Made. Commissioner Harry. Second. And a second by Commissioner Stevens. This uh, is an read the report. Please. This is an ordinance repealing and amending Article 12, Municipal Court of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Shawnee, Oklahoma. 
providing for appointment, removal of judges, duties of officers of the court, operation of the municipal court, authorizing and setting fees, with some to be determined by resolution, establishing jurisdiction and all other activities for the municipal court, <coughs> providing for repeal, providing for severability, providing for codification, and declaring an emergency. Call the roll, please. Karen. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Aging. Aye. Maynard. Aye. Paul. Aye. Winterringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Motion carries. I guess we need a separate motion here for an emergency in this matter. Please. Please. So moved. Commissioner Herod. Second. Second by Commissioner Winteringer. Call the roll, please. Herod. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Aging. Aye. Painter. Aye. Paul. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> <laughs> item number eight, consider a resolution declaring certain items of personal property and describing said items no longer needed by the city of Shawnee and authorizing the sale of the items at public auction. Uh, Mr. Bryce, would you like to comment on this? Or It says call on James Bryce here. You're the authority in this matter. <laughs> what about all the stuff the police have? What are we yeah, doing? you yeah, in charge of that? I want some of those brass knuckles. So. <laughs> no, two knives. <laughs> two resolutions. The police, the police are going to deal with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Weld them down and sell them. Yeah, but on, on the list, there, there are several vehicles, most of those. Uh, have been parted out to, to keep some of the fleet going that, that we have, so uh, they're not really in any condition for us to, for us to use. Uh, some of the other items, uh, they either don't work or are not usable anymore or are no longer needed within the city, so uh, those things tend to stack up and, and pile up in our storage buildings and we just need to get rid of them. Questions? Okay. Thank you. What about all that police stuff? That just That's coming up next, I guess. I was wrong asking about him about the brass knuckles. So. Uh, he's, he's got all the equipment. That's, that's not classified as parks and recreation. That's right. I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are actually two yeah. types of police well, items. They're the right. ones we dispose of. They're the ones that we auction, and that comes up in a minute. Okay. Okay, any further discussion on this matter? I was matter? kind of concerned about some of those auction items. In. <coughs> okay, the chair will entertain a motion in this matter. So moved. Commissioner second. Winteringer. And a, who did the second? second? Commissioner Hall. Call the roll, please. Winteringer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. A.G. Aye. Herod. Aye. Maynard. Aye. Motion carries. Item number nine. Now, here's where the chief got all this. Consider a resolution declaring certain items in the possession of the police department as surplus to be disposed of by propertyroom.com. Is that surplus? Is that the right term? This, these are things that have value, but we have no use for them. The things that had no value were pages 48 through 122. Under the no, wait a minute. <laughs> There's some stuff on there that's got to be Craigslist. Authentic. Not the stuff on those pages. Okay. That's expired credit cards in the end of a night. No, I was going to say a debit card on there. That I was going to say what we do with expired credit, credit cards. No, yeah, I saw debit <laughs> cards yeah, on you there. You got a debit card out there, George. Oh, my goodness. Any other, any more discussion, gang, in this matter? Okay. Uh, Chief, I guess Mary Ann took your report and handled that fine. Are you, you're not offended, are you? Are you okay? Okay. Chair will entertain a motion in this matter. So moved. Second. Commissioner Hall, second by Commissioner Winteringer. Call the roll, please. Hall? Aye. Winteringer? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Paging? Aye. Karen? Aye. Maynard? Aye. Motion carries. Item number 10, acknowledge sales tax report received October 2013. Ms. Simmons would you share the news with us? Actually, the sales tax was up last uh, this month. Um, compared to the previous year, um, the sales tax. Okay, wait, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, the October sales tax we received um, was seventy was up seventy eight thousand from last year, and we received one million four hundred sixty five thousand dollars 
Um, for the year so far fiscally, we are um, up $231,000, which is good. Um, I am very concerned about November and December with everything that's going on with federal government, so we're just going to have to wait and see. Sure. Um, also, I wanted to... I have a little... This is at hand now. I think she's going to Presentation. It's um, what I've done. This is... Um, See if I can do this. I don't do this very well. <coughs> it's on the right. It's going to be the bottom. Got it. Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. You want to borrow my glasses? <laughs> yeah. Time seems to be very really close sometimes. Brian, it's at the button on the right there. You see it. <laughs> Is that the eject button? <laughs> Is that the trap door? Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Yay. I know it's small. I apologize. And uh, you, the Christian, and the press have copies of the desk. These are the top ten revenues. These are the ten revenues that um, we collect. Um, the top 10 actually make up about 77% of our total revenue. As you see, I'm, just, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but sales tax, uh, since this is a comparing July, August, and September of 2011, 2012, and fiscal year 2013. Um, since uh, the gross of sales tax is up 3.81%, uh, basically a little over 1% per year, which is really not a huge growth. Um, that does not meet what we've done for salaries in the last couple of years. So what we have had to do um, is really watch our expenses to make sure that we can balance our budget. The use tax is up 8.6%. Um, that is point of delivery. Um, alcohol beverage tax is actually up 8%. And the cigarette tax is down 25%. That's probably why the alcohol's up. <laughs> Can't smoke. If you're not smoking, you're drinking, huh? That's a good point. And look all the money we're going to lose. I know. So we're going to encourage stop by your local liquor store and um, yeah. watch that stock up. Yeah. Oklahoma Natural Gas, um, OG&E, and Canadian Valley, those are going to fluctuate depending whether or not we have a hot summer or a cold that comes early. So... We'll see. Those are all running a little bit low. Um, Canadian Valley, Valley seems to be a little low, and I need to double check on that. But um, last year it was only twenty thousand. We're up thirty-one, but two years ago it was forty-three thousand. So I'm not sure on that one. Okay. Oops. This is just a graph, real quickly on. Um, and I apologize. This is January eleventh. We're having an. I'm having an Excel issue on my computer. Um, this is the use tax. How it's grown. Um, alcohol and cigarettes. Court fines. Um, court fines are um, down right now, um, basically, because last year we did a lot of catch-up and we were really trying to... Excuse me. We also did not have a warrant sweep last quarter. We had one scheduled and we had to cancel it. I inquired about why we were down. Makes a difference. <laughs> so you'll have two this quarter? We'll have Our one three. bigger one. Oh. This one's small on the screen and I didn't realize it was so small. These are um, actually the top five sales tax codes that we have in the city, which make up the majority. We have like 170 different codes, um, but the top five makes up almost, prime example for August, it was almost $1.3 million, and we collected $1,465. Um, the department stores, building materials, uh, full service restaurants, plumbing, and electric and natural gas. And I think there's a graph to give it better. As you can see, the, um, the retail has dipped some, but the rest of them are pretty much consistent. Um, so we're going to start trending this every month, or every quarter, I should say. We <coughs> are to do it every quarter, just to give you an idea of what, what industry is lower than previous quarter. If you like it monthly, we can do it monthly, but I think quarterly would be more accurate because it's the fluctuation and the timing with the Obama tax commission. 
And it's really interesting, the restaurants haven't budged. That's the green in the middle. It's consistent completely. Is there any questions? I know it was, you know, quick, but I just wanted to agree to get an idea. This is very informative. Very informative. I, I, I like this. Is and really I apologize, it's not color. I can email that if you hey, want call them retail trade that including groceries i believe so that was groceries in no that's that's no. In the 44 retail trade yeah that's the second one there's two second. categories yeah. they changed it all around recently so but it's amazing how just the top, top five makes the majority of our classes i mean the next level i was going to do the top 10 but it was so little it was like three thousand dollars four thousand huh. dollars because we have like a hundred of them plus more sure how far back do you have these figures, these statistics, as far as the, the top five? And I could five. probably go back a couple of years. I was just curious what businesses we have opened, like new restaurants or that sort of thing. Oh, whether it affected it. Yeah, whether it had affected the increase in sales tax or whether I could look at I can look like when we, when, I know when we opened Kohl's, uh -huh. you know, I could go back in that time frame just to okay. see what that could be. Yeah, I'm just kind of curious, especially about Well, now that year in audit that we've got, and I have a copy of that sheet that breaks out the restaurants and everything, it's laying on my desk. I can make a copy of that, and I think it went back like five years or something, and I might be wrong, but it's laying on the corner of my desk. If I've got it, I'll put it in y'all's box. You're talking about the sales tax from it? Yeah, from the <laughs> different categories. Oh. Uh, and, and we got that year in audit. You know, recap, not the real thick one. It was a thin one that we have, and it was like in the very back, either the next to the last page. And I think it goes back five to ten years. Okay, so I, I will, I'll, do my, I'll stick it in your box. I think you it have would to be remember that's from July 1 to June 30. Okay. It'd be interesting to see as new businesses open if we're moving taxes around, if we're actually talking about new, new sales tax dollars. What I've seen is really like kind of moving them around. Yeah, yeah. on your restaurants, especially. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was surprised when we got that one department store. I was surprised that we didn't see a significant increase, and in it. it really did not. But then we lost another one. You know, they just went to. Do we get any money from the satellite companies, or that's just the? Uh, yeah. So we need to encourage people to use cable. Right. Our, our, right. our cable companies use our road right of ways to hang their their cable lines on and so we have a franchise agreement with them and that's that would that's increase revenue for us if, if people went to it's pretty good cable company. Too. And I, I had a system bring uh, something to my attention with ATT Universal which I'm looking into it looks like they, uh, that's not on our bill they don't have it's just a straight $38 that, he's talking about the cable company that won't run the cable to you so you don't have a I choice I think you could get you for us you might have that issue yeah, yeah. 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 depends on some places yeah, Cindy, I had a question on on the cigarette test. It's it's <laughs> it's dropping down, but don't you attribute that to the uh, the twenty five percent off as as if it's bought in a, a Native American smoke shop? We that don't get here, and so most mm -hmm. the smokers I know out there, that's where they get their cigarettes. Not they're quite a bit less. They can't afford. But if they bought them, the like at a Quick Stop or something like that, we would. Receive I can't afford them. Yeah, I had to quit smoking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. This is very informative. Thank you. We really appreciate that. That kind of gives us a real overview, Cindy. Thank you very much. Okay, item number 11, City Manager's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bear with me tonight. There's been a lot going on in the last few weeks. Uh, some time ago, the Commission has asked for me to uh, spend some time in our regular meetings letting you know what's going on out of my office. And I've got about uh, 10 items tonight I'd like to either let you know about what's going on or where, where we're working on some things. <clears throat> Tim Berg and I will be in Dallas November 6th through 8th at the uh, International Council of Shopping Centers. This is where we've been for about the last four years with the Oklahoma Opportunity Booth where we recruit retailers. So if you have, if you have those ones that you and your family want to see, we'll be glad to go and, and talk to some of the, the developers and site selectors for those places. Um, some of the ones that we've been talking about most recently uh, near the mall have been some of the contacts that we've made uh, over the last few years, and it's, 
it's a relationship based business and it's really coming to fruition now. So yeah, if you get I G B I'd take them in there. <laughs> People <laughs> love them in H E B. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have to drive to Dallas and to get my <laughs> three to me. <laughs> sales tax compliance. We've talked about sales tax compliance in terms of, of, of business licenses and we are working on a white white paper that'll be coming to commissioners about that. But I wanted to talk about a couple of other things that are going on in some other cities in the state. Uh, the mayor and I attended uh, the OML regional meeting in Oklahoma City last Thursday. And the finance director there talked about compliance and what they are doing in terms of compliance and the return on the investment that they are getting for that. This goes back to a couple of years ago when the Oklahoma Municipal League created a liaison group to go work with the Oklahoma Tax Commission to see how they were spending the money that we give them to collect our sales tax. You guys are familiar with the fact that we currently uh, are charged 1% of the sales tax that they collect for us to go out there and enforce the sales tax codes that the state has. helps both us and them. Well, the liaison group came to the realization after the, after the dust settled with the Oklahoma Tax Commission that what really was going on was the 1% that, that the Oklahoma Tax Commission was collecting on behalf of our cities across the state was around $19 million. But the cost to provide the services they were providing to uh, collect the tax and uh, do code compliance, uh, compliance on it, was only about $10 million. That precipitated House Bill 1875 that will be proposed this uh, next legislative session uh, that <coughs> will reduce that 1% down to half a percent. What's that mean for us? That means about sixty to $70,000 savings we estimate per year. So the plan could be, if that transpires, that we use those dollars to either hire a compliance firm or hire some staff to do that compliance. But I've always maintained with commissioners that we need to be out there making sure we need to do we need to do what we need to do to collect that tax. Here's another astounding figure that Oklahoma City told us. They're telling us that for every dollar that they spend on compliance activities, they're getting six back. So it's something we really need to take a look at. Uh, I've been watching it closely. Uh, we need to support as, as well we can House Bill 1875. If for no other reason, uh, the tax commission is not, you doesn't need all that money for their operations in order to do the compliance activities and Oklahoma Tax Commission activities that they do for us now. So um, that pretty much covers that. Recycling. I know city commissioners approved that uh, a couple of meetings ago. We have, I met with uh, Mike Adcock last week to talk about some of the finer details of the contract. Uh, from that point, uh, his attorney and our attorney were going to get together and work on those final points, and we'll be doing that in the coming weeks, and we hope to bring that back to you guys in November. So when do we think it will go into effect? Uh, I'm, I'm shooting for somewhere around January 1st. Shawnee Proud Pot County Strong, that is a group that's been doing a lot of work in our community. Our commissioner is all familiar with those guys. Jim Kinneman was here today. He's... He and, and, and Johnny Geisel are both sort of heading up that. They've got a pretty good following these days, and they're wanting to clean up particularly our downtown. And they've been recruiting um, college students to pick up trash along the railroad tracks, to pick it up downtown. I know several commissioners have met with them. I want to let you know that, that the city and myself are in support of their efforts. Well, a couple of things that I have done to try and support those efforts is, number one, Pay for a porta potty out there for the volunteers that are out there doing the work. Not sure where it is, but it's, it was <laughs> I authorized it, and I don't know if they've taken advantage of that yet. The other thing that we have is our contract with Central Disposal is for four roll-on, roll-off trash trash containers every month, so that we can use them for city activities, whether we're cleaning up a lot or we're doing a construction project or something like that. We get four of those as part of our contract for free, and we've kind of been keeping track of the ones that we. Uh, haven't used so that there's an inventory there. So I've offered up one of those at this point so that they can put some of the trash along the railroad tracks uh, into that and it can be <coughs> up by central disposal. Just wanted to make sure that the commission knew that, that that initiative was something we were supportive of and that in those efforts we're helping with <coughs> that. Bill Geist was here Monday. I know that didn't necessarily work out with all the commissioner's schedules. I apologize for that. The, there were three boards that we needed to get together and when Kinley called me there wasn't a whole lot of flexibility in what we could do with it. The city Commission convened, 
Convention and Visitors Bureau's Advisory Committee and the Chamber all convened on the 14th of October. And we had the Chamber's consultant, Phil Geist, come in to give us his recommendation and report. <coughs> and it just so worked out that with his schedule, it was going to be that Monday, <coughs> and it really was a small time frame in which he could do it. So I, I appreciate commissioners that were able to make their schedules work for that. Also, um, as Commissioner Herod alluded, his recommendation after he laid everything out was that it's time for us to go to a 501c6. He did recommend that we <coughs> have a transition period for that, so we'll be talking with the chamber to figure out what that looks like and bringing it back to you guys to let you know what's going on with it. This is a pretty exciting project that uh, sort of, sort of, kind of uh, got put in our lap. I know it's been going on around town, but I wasn't. The city of Shawnee wasn't involved in it. Um, and there's a there's a sheet that's on your your desk there that's actually got two sides on it, even though mine's got one. I printed, side. I printed something off of the uh, off the OCAN website. Basically, it's a broadband initiative that basically, under Brad Henry, uh, a grant was given to the state from the federal government in order to get internet to communities, particularly rural communities. Something that I knew about that, but what I didn't realize was the need to get it to our institutions. St. Gregory's, uh, OBU, university, us, schools, all of those places. So what's going on now is discussions with uh, the OneNet folks in Oklahoma City and the OCAN folks. And basically what we need to do is find, there, there's, there's, I'm jumping a little bit all over the place, but essentially what, what we what looks like is going to happen is, is there's an, issue, an initiative with the Native American Broadband Association, OCAN, and OneNet to find some pilot cities that would be willing to put dark fiber, and that's just basically um, fiber that would come down in our city that would be able to be usable for those institutions that I talked about. They don't have enough now. It's not as reliable as they'd like for it to be, and they need to forecast it for the future. So. They brought the city of Shawnee, myself, and, and, and Steve Nolan in to talk about what our needs are. Represent We represent the city from the standpoint that we own the right-of-ways that that fiber would be in. There are some things that we'd like to do with it in the future, so we're having those conversations with them to try and make sure that we're one of the test sites, that maybe we could get some grant money through the Native American Broadband Association uh, and do some real things here in our community. Because at the end of the day, it will create long-term economic, public health, public safety, and educational benefits for our citizens. And for, for those at the end of the day, that means jobs and growing businesses here. If our industries need it and our, our institutions need it, we need to be working toward getting it here. And if it's running down the interstate, we need to be working toward that. So is that line currently in existence yep. going sure. down the interstate? Right? This map yeah. here. This, this map, map shows that? Shows, shows where okay. It okay. Huh. I didn't realize yeah. that. Was One that's been probably back in the 90s when we tied into it. There's a connection out here on Hardesty Road in the AT&T box out there. There's one net, Bethel School, Tecumseh School, Dale School, all have connections in that. Many of them have fiber to their buildings. Mm -hmm. The fiber runs right down 177 and then highway down 13th Street right into Tecumseh High School. Goes down Hardesty Road into Bethel School, goes down the other way, the school. The interesting part about it is, and we need to figure this out, is is you know there are some industries that we have that are for profit. They're going to be using a state installed system to carry their data. So all that's got to be worked out at this point. But between the Native American tribes and and the institutions and the industry here, I think we'll be able to figure it out. Right now, we're using AT and T or Allegiance or UVerse as we've talked about tonight. But this could be another option. Not not that I necessarily want the city of Shawnee to get into the business of of hanging fiber. We're not prepared to do that. If we were in the electric business, that might be something that we could do. But maybe we could partner up with one of those private sector folks for them to install and maintain it, and then we can grow our city with that with that backbone. Our Dobson's the one that put the fiber down the interstate all the way to New Mexico, out of New Mexico. So I've got just a couple me. more things. Had a few more other days. Well, then, uh, Nine one one. After our visits to Muskogee and Lawton, I wanted to see where the county commissioners were on, on what's going on with that. So I met with Commissioner Dennis and with Commissioner Stackhouse to talk about their thoughts. 
they have some concerns, the next step is to call another one of those meetings that we've had out of the county commissioner's office, invite everybody, everybody in the room and try and identify what the barriers are. See who likes the Muscogee plan. See who likes the Lawton plan and see if we can't blend some of those and come up with a plan going forward. So um, I have not had a chance to sit down with Commissioner Thomas, but I will make uh, plans to do that. Just wanted to make sure the commission was aware that we were still working on it. What was that 911 you're talking about? I should also mention that Commissioner Stackhouse came down and uh, Chris Thomas, uh, the administrative service director that is over dispatch, gave him a tour and he was he was impressed with our operations and what our future plans are. The other thing that uh, we did is uh, Commissioner Haird and Mayor Maynard and myself, as well as a couple of other folks that are Rotarians in town, met to talk about Rotary District Grant and Global Grants through Rotary International. Um, Right now, the discussion is to do active recreation for kids and potentially some tournament type <coughs> recreation, whether that be soccer or baseball or whatever, and do it in the vicinity of downtown. <coughs> there are still a lot of things that need to be worked out at this point, but this was a grant that came out of Rotary as a result of the storms that happened in May. And there was some outpouring of support from Rotary International for our area, so we may be able to take advantage of a million dollar grant to do something like that right here in Shawnee. Still very preliminary, but wanted to make sure that you guys knew that we were working on it. Finally, uh, just generally, I want to let you know that uh, uh, I met with Dr. Moore regarding the preliminary plans for school needs in the coming years. Uh, if you haven't heard, you know, they're, they're still finishing up their capital plans for the, the Shawnee District. I think the number that I saw was around $75 million that needs to be developed over that time period. And you know you can argue which way it should be spent, whether it's for maintenance or a new high school or whatever. But they are certainly an entity in our community that needs assistance, and we need to work with them. That's it's kind of in my understanding is that he and I just get together to talk about where he and I are. You know, we have capital needs; he has capital needs. Where we are, where can we share those and, and communicate with each other? So, Mr. Mayor, that is the last thing I had, other than to remind, remind commissioners that uh, our retreat is scheduled for 6:30 Tuesday, November 12th, at the Expo. And our facilitator from our last session will be there also. What was our last comment? Our, our finishing of our retreat is November 12th, Tuesday, November 12th at the Expo. And, and our facilitator, Mr. Leo Presley, will be there for that. Okay. Thank you. Very informative. Uh, new business. No new business or administrative reports tonight. Okay. Item number 14 is consider an executive session to discuss city manager's performance, evaluation, and employment We're going to do the airport and this one. We'll do it when we get back. Let's just do it at the end. Because these people, okay, these people go on and do nothing on that airport. Pardon the other thing. I asked Mary about it. Okay. <laughs> Contract pursuit to 25 OS 307 B1, discussing the employment, hiring, and appointment, demotion, discipline, or resignation of any individual salaried public officer in board. Chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Harrod? Aye. Quinneringer? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Hagee? Aye. Maynard? Aye. Paul? Aye. Motion carries. Give me a second, Paul. Let's just go into Brian's office. It's in the afternoon. <coughs> and uh, I'll ask for a motion if there is one. I'd like to make a motion. Are we doing this? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we um, uh, proceed with the contract uh, items that we talked about, uh, the four items in Mr. McDougall's contract, based on those uh, contract wording <coughs> that we move forward in. Uh, accepting that contract. Second. We have a motion and a second. 
Call a roll, please. Smith. Aye. Winteringer. Keith, second. Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. I mis misheard. Um, we sound so much alike. <laughs> Stevens. Aye. Don't look alike, thank you. Ag. Aye. Herod. Aye. Maynard. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Don't look like I'm thankful. I will adjourn the city commission at this time and move to the Shawnee Airport Authority. Being uh, that we do have a quorum, item number one is consider approval of the consent agenda. Go move. Have a motion. Second. Wait, wait, we got talking going on. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry. Order. Attention, attention. <laughs> We have the uh, we're at the now Shawnee Airport Authority and we do have a quorum and we have a motion by Commissioner Harriet to approve the consent agenda. Second. And a second by Commissioner Bye. Hall. <laughs> Call a roll, please. Harriet. Aye. Hall. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. AG. Aye. <coughs> Aye. Any new business? Mayor, any business or administrative reports tonight? Okay, then I will adjourn the airport authority and move to the municipal authority. We do have a quorum. I'll consider the approval of the consent agenda and the municipal authority. So moved. Second. I got it. You got them? Which of those two did it? Huh? Paul. Okay. Aye. <laughs> Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. A.G. Aye. Karen. Aye. Maynard. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, I will adjourn our city commission meeting. Thanks to all of you for being here. Yes. <laughs>